Hello everyone and welcome back to YouTube channel. After a while, while I was making a new course, which you probably already know. So let's start with the first tutorial after this break. For this time, I decided to show you how you can prepare your mixes for the mastering in order to reduce the peaks and match them to not get destroyed by the limiter. And what do I mean by that? So let's say that you are mixing on minus 15 RMS and by mixing on minus 15 RMS you have a lot of space, actually 15 decibels for peaks to have a lot of dynamics and by dynamics I of course mean the difference between RMS and peaks. So let's say you are mixing on minus 15 and then you will have on some channels or some stems you will have a difference between RMS and peaks that is much bigger. For example, the open head can have a really huge transient and it will be really loud in those peaks as well. So if you are mixing on minus 15 RMS, the whole mix down, and then you see that some of those sounds are reaching minus 5 of the peaks and our track is gonna end up at the level of minus 5 at least and latest fashion is that we have our mixes at minus 4 RMS, even minus 3. So, by mixing on minus 15 RMS and we have some peaks arriving at minus 5, for example an open head, and then you put a limiter on top or the mastering engineer put a limiter on your mix and it boosts this whole mix down for 10 dB in order to arrive to minus 5 RMS. That means that even that open head that peaks already on minus 5 gonna get pushed for 10 dBs which means that at least 5 dBs of that open head of the peaks are gonna get reduced and kind of destroyed by the limiter. So in order to prevent that, I advise you always, even if you mix on the lower levels, I do not, I always prefer to mix on the loud levels because I do not see a logical sense to keep the dynamics and to keep a difference between peaks and RMS and then on the end I know that my track is gonna end up at minus 5 or minus 4 or minus 3. So on the end I will have 3, 4 or 5 dB difference or dynamic range. So in order to prevent that uh, there is this amazing plugin which is called Standard Clip which will actually help you to reduce those peaks and allow you to even push the level of those channels even higher or to prevent to remove those peaks and straight in the mix you can hear how does that sound so you are not letting any chance to send to the mastering engineer something that you mixed already and then you get something that kind of sounds a bit different and that way you might get dissatisfied by the mastering engineer because you are not hearing the same peaks anymore and whatsoever so in order to do that my advice is always to or to use this Saturn with broken tube as I showed in previous some of the previous videos on my YouTube channel where you can insert this distortion or a Saturn and then you can choose a broken tube as an algorithm and it will reduce those peaks and it will kind of make a much similar and much smaller difference between RMSs and peaks and by doing so I'm not saying that we should destroy all the peaks I just want to tell you that I believe it's much smarter if you do that and you're not allowing somebody else and that way you will get the results that you really wanted on the end as no nobody will change your mix by applying a limiter on top reducing your peaks and you get dissatisfied so for this part I have here track that I didn't finish but what I did here, basically if I turn on the limiter, you will see that from the mix side I was pushing all of those levels to get on minus 3.5 RMS without even pushing even one decibel on the limiter. This was just an experiment uh, when I was testing how much and what levels should I bring inside my converters to get the best possible results and this project was actually when I tried to bring from the mix straight away a lot of gain inside my converters and see how that will end up. And I must say I got pretty nice result as you will be able to hear right now. So let's just hear the track and let's see the limiter. All 
already we can hear a lot of kind of transients on the hi-hats, especially when they sound with the kick and with the bass, and especially because there's a few layer of the hi-hats as well. The snare is having like really loud transient as well. And all of those samples, when they get summed into the same positions or the same samples, they're gonna provide like really loud and kind of harsh sounding effect. And the best example to show you this is on the groups of drums where I, I have one group where I put the snares, claps, hi-hats and all the top end. So just by inserting this standard clip plugin and then by this clip here, by this fader here, you can reduce those peaks. And let me just play the, the solo of this group and I will play the part with the open hat. What you should be listening is the transients, like how much of those transients we have when it's off and when it's on. As we can see, already have on the limiter some of those peak reductions. So when I turn on the standard clip here, when I play, I did pretty extreme settings here just in order so you can be able to hear it because I don't know how it YouTube will match this sound and will you be able if I do not do on these extreme settings. So we had without, we had a reduction that means that all these peaks on the drums were peaking for 5 dB. Yeah, minus 3.7 and when I turn on this one but I hear pull it to minus 13 which is really extreme but anyway just in order so you're gonna be able to hear it now they do not go above minus 8 db so that means that i have still space here if i want i can bring the whole channel the group of the whole drums for even more 8 dbs and that way i am just removing those peaks and i'm trying to get the best possible results by applying this standard clip and to reduce as much peaks as I want in order not to change and not to destroy the sound. So I believe this is a really amazing plugin and this plugin can go to any sounds that you want. Only what I do not like it was when you put on a kick with something with a big low end, then you get straight away some kind of distortion and it doesn't sound so good. So there's also, for example, this plug sound here, which... So the peaks are arriving to minus 1.5 without the standard clip. And then you just turn it on, you remove this clip down and you can choose from those free algorithms. And I believe the best I always get with Soft Clip Pro. So then I just remove it and then you can see here as well the dot of the peaks that are going up and this is the level where you set your threshold. In a way it's kind of a threshold but it's just called clip here and you can set it up and it will kind of limit the peaks to not go above that point. So I removed at least for 3 dB here on this channel and this is only a single channel and if you apply this or if you reduce only for 1.5 or even 2 dBs on each channel, I believe that on the end you will get much better results and if you put a limiter on top you will see that it won't destroy anything. Even here on the master channel I have another one but here I was really gentle 0.6 dB and if I play the whole mix down now, but for the drums, if you can see, I have two different. This is minus 10 and this is minus 13, but I can remove it, just reduce it a little bit. I just wanted to, you gonna be able to hear the difference. So now when I play the whole mix with all the standard clips on, on many different channels, and when is the moment to put this plugin is when you see on the meters here and when you see that peaks are going almost to zero and you want to bring the level even more on that channel and you see that you are not able because it's gonna start peaking then you apply this or you can insert this Saturn Saturn one with algorithm of broken tube here and then by drive you can also reduce but Saturn is working kind of a differently 
So there are two different ways how you can remove those peaks. One is with Saturn on broken tube and another is with standard clip. Standard clip is a really, it's kind of more clear way to reduce those peaks. But now if I show you the analyzer and if I show you even the limiter with all of them on top. So I have two standard clips on the drums. I have on those sequences here, especially the ones with the silent because silent always have kind of really loud peaks. And for me, I always put a kind of a distortion a little bit or with the Saturn or I put always a standard clip just in order to remove those peaks as silent is really nice sounding VST but it does have a lot of those peaks which are not so good when if you want to bring your mix to sounds loud. So let's hear this and I will play from this part. <laughs> A world where anything is possible. So I have a like super loud mix over here and already with a limiter just to see if it's gonna reduce any of those peaks and just with applying the standard clip on many different channels, one on the group of the drums, one on the master with subtle settings and on those separately all these pluck distorted sounds I have standard clip as well and always trying to reduce a little bit of those peaks. It does change the sound but if you ask me it changed it in a way that it sounds even better than before because especially with the hi-hats a lot of transients a lot of harsh information and then just standard clip on top you get something that's really smooth and kind of much warmer sound so this plugin is really something that I really wanted to share with you probably some of you already are familiar with it but this is an amazing plugin if you ask me and this was the first video after this break I made and I will try to make every Wednesday one tutorial and I would really like if you write in the comments what would you like to see next from my tutorials and that will be it so see you next week with the new tutorial stay safe and see you soon next week bye ciao